Domi. I am Christy. From today, I am your mother. Make sure you listen to me. I want you to be my daughter and live your life accordingly. First of all, we're going to have a parent-child meeting. I want you to show up at our house in the next three days. Our house means your father's house. You know where it is, right? Excuse me? Who are you? I'm your mother. My mother died two years ago. I'm not interested in some kind of prank. I'm not that mother. You know your father remarried, don't you? That's news to me. I'm the one who married your father. We had a beautiful wedding in Hawaii last week. We just got back from our honeymoon. Oh. After we enjoyed our honeymoon, I thought I'd do something nice to my new family, you know? I'm a kind and sensible wife. So I thought I'd give you, my husband's ex-wife's child, a nice life too. I don't think a truly kind and sensible person would say that about herself. You don't seem to be able to communicate well, and I'm not interested in getting involved with your family. So, goodbye. I understand your confusion at this sudden turn of events. I get it. But don't worry. Your biological mother has already passed away. So I, who married your biological father and became his wife, am automatically your mother. From now on, you can count on me like your real mother. I don't want to. What? I just remembered. Aren't you Christy, the woman my father cheated on my mother with, who was the reason my parents divorced? I heard that when my father divorced my mother, he and the other woman broke up. That breakup was one of the conditions my mom offered in order to get divorced. So why are you married to my father? Oh, you knew all that? I never met you, but I knew the details of what had happened when things had settled down. Well, I'm not going to hide anything from you. So I'll tell you. When I heard that your mother had passed away, I got back together with your father six months ago. And we got married. I finally got the position of wife of the company president that had always wanted. Since the person who made the offer is no longer with us, I'll do whatever I want. I see. You're a prick just like you used to be. Huh? I don't know which part of you is kind or sensible. I'm appalled to hear it. I don't consider you or my father's family. I have no intention of getting along with you in the future. I don't want to get involved in your affairs, so please leave me alone. If you'll excuse me. Well, wait a minute. What do you want? I'm not going to ask for your approval without offering you anything. You're single, aren't you? Poor thing. You must be so lonely. That's why I found you a wonderful husband. What? I'm telling you to show up at our house to meet your future husband. It seems you ran away from your parents' house after they divorced. But without your father's backing, you could only get an average, boring man, right? That's why you're still single at your age, isn't it? Let me, the president's wife, solve that problem for you. I have a high income and a nice looking man for you. You should be thankful. No, thank you. Goodbye. Sis, can we chat right now? Something has happened. Tommy, I'm on my lunch break so we can chat. What's up? That scab! Dad married that scab, Christy! What? I got a text from her today. She says she found out about Mom's death and got back together with Dad six months ago. And they got married a week ago. They went on their honeymoon and came back today. What? I guess that dad had my contact info on his phone, and that's how Christy found my number. Also, she said to me, your real mother has already passed away, and I married your biological father and became his wife, which automatically makes me your mother. From now on, you can depend on me like your real mother. Huh? Of course I rejected her offer. These people are such pricks. I know. 
And, you know, she was saying some weird stuff. Weird stuff? Something about finding me a husband with a high income. What? What the hell? She wants me to come to her house in the next three days to meet the man. I should ignore her, right? Of course. Besides, there's no way you're getting married now. It must be some kind of harassment. I know, right? But she did say something that bothered me a little. She told me that she felt sorry for me for being single at my age. Maybe it's not me the scumbag is talking about. That's possible. I'm curious, too. I'll look into it. Tommy, why don't you block the scumbag? She's annoying, right? Hmm. But I'm afraid of blocking her and not knowing what she'll do. I think I'll just leave it like this and see what happens. Either way, you're just going to ignore what scumbag says. (laughs) Tommy. You don't want to come to the face-to-face meeting, do you? That's fine with me. I've already arranged your marriage. All you have to do now is show up at the wedding venue on the day, and everything will be set. This is my gift to you as your new mother. Take it gratefully. The first Sunday of next month is the wedding day. So be at the Starlight Hotel by 7 a.m. I will arrange the dress and the wedding venue on my end. It's a small ceremony for the two families only, but please don't be rude to the groom's family. You do realize that this is unacceptable. I could just barely tolerate you not coming to the wedding. But how dare you not come to the wedding? You don't understand that without the bride, there can be no wedding, right? The groom and his family are already there. The wedding is about to start. What are you doing? Come to the wedding hall right now. Not only did you not show up at the designated time, you didn't even call me at all. Are you trying to disgrace me? What? I'm not getting married. Huh? What? Are you playing games with me? I've told you before. Don't you feel sorry for the groom? You're still talking about that? Of course I am. You're getting married today. I don't have a boyfriend, and I have no plans to get married. You're getting married to someone I... Your mother decided for you. Huh? The man you're marrying is 45 years old, but his family is very wealthy. So you'll be rich. 45 years old? You may feel the age difference now, but after a certain number of years, you won't mind so much. And his face doesn't look that old for a 45-year-old. He doesn't even have a tan. And his skin is so beautiful that I envy him. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, no. I'm serious. I even have the marriage certificate ready. If you're serious, please stop it. Hey, Tommy, listen to your mother. What? Who says you're my mother? I told you the other day. Now that your real mother has passed away, I, who married your real father, am automatically your mother. Are you joking? You're the one who's joking. Enough of this stubbornness. Accept it. I also told you that this marriage is a gift from me to you. If you don't have the backing, you'll never have the chance to marry a wealthy man. I found you a husband. And I'm going to give you the happiness of being a rich wife, you know? It's not polite to lash out at me like that, even if we weren't related as mother and daughter. You scumbag! Huh? Don't act like you're my mother. You're a nuisance. Scumbag. You took advantage of my mother's death to get back together with my father. I don't want to be told about politeness by the rudest person like you. No one can be my mother other than my real mother. That's nonsense. I've already decided who you're going to marry. Now get your butt to the wedding. You're at an age where you're going to be an old hag anyway. And I'm pretty sure you're going to be rich when you marry this man. So it's really not that bad for you. That's not the point. I'm not old enough to get married yet. Huh? Goodbye. Don't talk nonsense. Oh, well, I'm coming to pick you up now. Sis, the scumbag lady seems to be trying to start the wedding on her own. And the husband she says she found for me is a 45-year-old man. That's too much. He 
He is a 45-year-old man, and he's a very complicated guy. Did you find out anything on your side, too? Yep. I got in touch with a lawyer who helped mom with a divorce. She knew mom and dad from when they were young, so I thought she might know about dad's current situation. And my guess was right. She knew stuff. And now I have some idea of what's going on. Tell me. When I told her about the wedding, the first words out of her mouth were, Oh, I thought today was the oldest daughter's wedding. That's what she said. You mean your wedding, not mine? Yeah. I knew it. I thought Christy was estimating my age as quite high. She must have mistaken me for the oldest daughter. Well, I'm only 29 either, you know. I think it's too early for that old hag to be messing with me about my age. I know, right? Anyway, didn't Dad think it was strange? He's been on an overseas business trip for the past five months. The marriage proposal was brought up a month after that. It seems that Christy was in charge of the wedding and other arrangements. By the way, Dad was supposed to attend the wedding today, but he got seriously injured on his business trip and had to cancel his attendance. Things are so chaotic. And then? Oh, wait a minute. I just got a text from the scumbag. Wow, seriously? If there's anything else you are going to tell me, just keep typing and send it to me. I'll let her know if I need to. Okay, I'll let you know. I'm here to pick you up. Now get ready and come to the wedding. Remember, even though it's a small ceremony, you're keeping everyone waiting. Don't be selfish and accept the marriage. Pick me up? Where are you picking me up from? At your apartment in Avalon Town? Of course. Open the door. That's the apartment my older sister and I used to live in. But we've already moved out. What? Your older sister? You're the eldest of two sisters, right? No, I'm Tommy, the second eldest. Huh? Isn't the first daughter Tommy and the second daughter is Lily? It's the other way around. The eldest is Lily and I'm the second daughter, Tommy. You mean I remembered it wrong? Did you get our names from my father? Huh? Uh, well, now that you mention it, when my husband talked about his daughters... He would say, my eldest daughter, blah, blah, blah. My second daughter, blah, blah, blah. So I don't think I've ever heard the names directly from him. So I guess there must have been some kind of misunderstanding or assumptions. Well, I'm sure you got my number by snooping on my father's cell phone or some such devious means. I guess there was no one to correct your mistake. What a surprise. Then call your older sister Lily right now. Your sister is a lonely old single woman too, isn't she? I heard that after your parents divorced, you two sisters cheekily disobeyed your father and left home. How can such a cheeky woman who's approaching 30 get married? I've arranged everything for her. So tell her to come to the wedding now. Sarah's already married. Huh? She got married six months ago and now lives on a remote island where her husband was born and raised. What? So you have to give up on having a wedding day. Fine. Then you can be the bride. Huh? Where are you? I'll pick you up right away. Um... You'll get a marriage license right after the wedding today. I'm only 15, you know. What? I'm a freshman in high school. What? I'm not old enough to get married yet, by law. Didn't you know? Considering my husband's age... I thought you were older. My sister and I are 14 years apart. After Sarah got married, I lived in the high school dormitory. Is that true? Why don't you ask my father? I'm sure he'll remember how old his daughter is. No way. I mean, you've never talked about it with my father. I wouldn't talk about his ex-wife's daughters unless I had to. I didn't even know the age of his first daughter until I was in the process of arranging the marriage. You should have asked how old his second daughter was as well. Or maybe you should have asked the names of the first and second daughters first. (laughs) After all, your plan was based on assumptions and misunderstandings. Shut up. Well, it's none of my business. This is not good. What am I going to do then about today's wedding? I'm sorry, but I'm about to board a ferry to a remote island where Sarah lives 
So I'm afraid I won't be able to get a signal on my phone. What? Hey, you don't have to get married right now, but just be the bride today. The thing is, your father's company is in financial trouble. The groom's parents are the only ones who can help him out of this crisis. That's why I need you to marry him. I see. That's why you were trying to force the marriage. You said you wanted to do something for your daughter. Something motherly. But in the end, it's all about self-interest, isn't it? That's... that's not true. I was doing it for your sake. You don't want your father's company to go bankrupt, do you? You know, when you inherit in the future, your share will be less. As I recall, my late mother was the legal representative for me and my sister's disinheritance. What? My mother's family is rich. We don't need our scum father's inheritance. Well, goodbye now. Hey, Tommy, can we have a barbecue for dinner tonight? I got some fresh shellfish and fish from the Islanders earlier. I'm thinking of grilling them together. That's great. I'm near the supermarket now. If we're having a barbecue, do you want me to buy some vegetables or something? That would be great. Okay. Oh, yeah. It seems like Mom's lawyer contacted me this morning. Oh, you mean about the wedding yesterday? Yeah. I called her right back, and she told me an interesting story. Interesting story? Apparently, Dad's company is on the verge of bankruptcy after all. So Christy was right. And as a way out of the crisis, Christy offered her husband's oldest daughter to the son of the president of Dad's business partner. The 45-year-old shut-ins. Son and dad were supposed to get financial support as a result of the marriage. Wow. Oh, by the way, Christy said the man had nice skin for a 45-year-old. I guess it meant that he had no tan nor age spots because he's a shut-in man. Maybe it meant that that's the only advantage he had. That's not an advantage at all. That's too creepy. I mean, we both like healthy macho guys, right? That's right. Your husband is a diving instructor. He has a nice tan, doesn't he? I can see he's your type. Well, I don't need to talk about my husband right now. But even if I were single, I wouldn't want a 45-year-old shut-in man. Me neither. There's no way you would agree to such an absurd marriage. Maybe Christy thought that if I heard that Dad's company was going bankrupt, I would consent to it without a second thought. Come to think of it, she was talking about inheritance when she was trying to persuade me. She's such a scumbag. It's true, isn't it? Oh? Hmm? Speak of the devil. I got a text from her. Oh no. Are you going to reply? No way. <laughs> I'm going to block her. Dummy! Dummy! Answer my phone quickly. How could you treat your mom this way? Tommy, I'm talking to you. Now what? You're disturbing my serene life, don't you know? Spit it out quickly before I officially get out of my life. We're seriously in debt right now. We really need your help, please. You can't leave your used-to-be mom and dad living in misery, can you? Again? Ugh. You just know how to drive me mad, don't you? Come on, what do you want? I'm too tired of your stupid calling and nagging. Don't waste my precious time. Oh, yeah. Because you didn't come to the wedding, the groom's family was really angry. They forced us to pay them a huge amount of money as a fine. We're in really serious trouble right now. Please help us. We have no one but you to turn to. Ugh, seriously? You expect me to bail you out every single time? I can't believe you managed to mess up your wedding so badly. And now you're burdening me with your financial problems? I have my own life to deal with, you know. Why can't you just figure things out on your own for once? But, Tommy, we're family. Family is supposed to help each other in times of need. I thought I could count on you. I didn't ask for this mess, and I never wanted to be in debt. 
We're desperate. And we don't know where else to turn. Please, just this once, lend us a hand. Oh, spare me the family lecture. You think being family gives you a free pass to constantly make terrible decisions? I have my own responsibilities and bills to pay. Why should I sacrifice my hard-earned money for your mistakes? You need to learn to be independent and take care of yourselves. I'm not your personal ATM. Fine, Tommy. I see how it is. I guess we're not as important to you as we thought. We'll figure something out on our own, like we always do. But just remember, when you're the one in trouble, don't come crying to us for help. Oh, please, spare me the guilt trip. You're the one who got yourselves into this mess, not me. I've tried to help you countless times, but it's never enough. I'm tired of being taken advantage of. If you want to ruin your own lives, go ahead. But don't drag me down with you. I have no sympathy left for your constant neediness. Oh my goodness. How dare you treat your ex-mother like this? That's just unbelievable. I used to be really nice to you. But now, this is how you repay me? You're nothing but an ungrateful daughter. Oh yeah? Do you really think so? I just think of what you did to my life. Seriously, Christy, it's time for some self-reflection. Remember the time you forced me to marry that strange man just to pay off your husband's debt? Yeah, that was totally messed up. I can't believe I was such a stupid fool back then. But guess what? I'm not naive anymore. I've grown wiser. And I won't allow you to manipulate me anytime you want. No, sir. I'm taking control of my life now, and I won't let you hurt me any longer. Ugh, you're still that damn stupid daughter without little change. I know I can't rely on you to do anything. You're nothing but a useless brat all along. A disappointment. Yeah, yeah, I'm that bad and stupid. So what? Why do you have to crawl to me and ask for help? I tell you what, it's pointless. I'll not give you anything, even a dime. Ugh, seriously? You're still going on with your incessant complaining? I can't believe you're still stuck in that same old narrative. You know what's truly disappointing? You constantly need to belittle and demean me. But guess what? I've had enough of your toxic attitude. Oh, please, spare me the dramatics. You think I'm the one crawling to you for help? Huh, that's rich. I wouldn't come to you for anything if my life depended on it. And as for giving you anything, not even a dime. You're right, because you've never done anything to deserve it. Well, isn't it just typical of you to deflect and act all high and mighty? It's always everyone else's fault, right? You never take responsibility for your own actions. And you know what? I don't need your help or your money. I've learned to rely on myself. Unlike you. Oh, please, spare me your self-righteousness. I've seen enough of your so-called independence. It's just a facade, a way for you to cover up your incompetence. Good luck trying to make it on your own without any support. Let's see how far you get. Okay, fine. Mark my words. I'll never forget this. And I'll make you pay for everything you've done to me. My mother's lawyer told me through my sister what happened to that scumbag woman. She was blamed for making a false marriage proposal based on her own assumptions. The groom's family apparently made her pay a fee. It seems that the groom's family demanded that she pay for the wedding and the honeymoon that she had booked on her own. The amount of money was not that much, but my father's company was on the verge of bankruptcy. So she had a very hard time paying back the money. And just as she finally finished paying it back, my father's company went bankrupt. They were saddled with a large amount of debt and their gorgeous lifestyle took a turn for the worse. They are now both working and living in extreme poverty.